I thank you so much um, for inviting me here this evening. Thank you to the wonderful previous speakers um, who really, I think, covered a, a lot of the reasons why we're all here today. Um, I too would like to um, acknowledge that we are meeting on the land of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. And I would like to pay my respects to their elders both past and present and any emerging elders that are here with us today. I would also like to pay my respects to the pioneers of drug law reform in this room and I can see a few of you here. And the people whose, um, I guess, whose personal tragedy has also been the reason that we fight today and the reason that, that they fight and the reason that I think we are actually making some real change. Uh, Support Don't Punish is such an important day, as many of the previous speakers have acknowledged. It's, it's a kind of a protest to a really appalling day that's also on today, but um, I reflect back on my first Support Don't Punish, which um, we saw a quick picture where Nick and I decided to hand out pills, um, happy pills, of course, <laughs> uh, down at Flinders Station. And we just put a pill in a little baggie and started saying, happy Wednesday, have a happy pill. And remarkably, most people took them. No questions, sure. <laughs> Occasionally someone said, what's in that? Um, but not much. You know? and, and that was the point we were trying to, you know, that was kind of the point that people, you know, take pills without knowing what is in them. And that was, that was our campaign was around pill testing and... It was so wonderful to see the, the pilot program that Steph mentioned at Grooving in the Moo uh, earlier this year. That we finally got some testing up in, in Australia and I hope that that does lead to further testing because we know it saves lives. And we know that what we saw in Canberra was that while we might have the most expensive drugs in, Austra in the world, We've got the most shit drugs in the world. You know, it might take us half an hour to get delivery of cocaine, but I can bet your bottom dollar there's very little cocaine in it. Um, so through law reform, um, I, I hope that we can see change. And uh, also seeing Steph in your um, T-shirt tonight, today, tonight um, the ACT UP T-shirt. And while I started in, um, in sex work and law reform, also, my first volunteer gig in that area was working on a mobile needle exchange bus. And um, this was back in the 80s when Australia was good with good on drugs. Well, I mean, we're all good on drugs. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us better than others. But, um, <coughs> however, this was when we were brave. And this was when we recognised that harm minimisation had to come at the forefront. And if we were going to stop people dying, if we were going to stop the spread of HIV and AIDS into nice people, um, we had to stop the nasty people, being the drug users and the sex workers and the homosexuals, from spreading it to the nice people. So we took up some wonderful harm minimisation programs and we were one of the first countries in the world that really adopted needle exchange programs in a national and forward-thinking way. And I was very proud to be part of that. And I, sadly, I think we lost our way along there. Um, but still, some of the remnants of that is that we have peer education in Australia uh, in a way that very few other countries ever got. You know, we, we had funding for peer education. So that was my beginning. And it was part of the ACT UP, and it was part of you know, if we don't act to save our own lives, no one else will. Um, and then establishing the, the Australian Sex Party, um, which, again, was just a really, you know... Uh, Nick was right, it was frustration. It was absolutely frustration that governments were going one way and we as a community were going another. And drug law reform was certainly part of that. You know, we in the community, and I think most of my colleagues in Parliament, we know someone who has been affected by drugs. Many of us have had loved ones die from drug use. Certainly many of us have had loved ones affected in a negative way. And many of us have just had drugs and largely enjoyed them. 
Um, many of us probably still do have drugs and largely enjoy them. Um, I would say that drugs got me elected, uh, and I was on drugs when I was elected. And no, that's the wrong way of saying that. <laughs> yes, I, I'll try and rephrase that. Uh, <laughs> admitting that I use drugs, um, and admitting that publicly helped me get elected, and I think it's something on days like support, don't punish is days that we should remember that. To reduce the stigma, we need to come out of the closet and we need to talk about this. And this is what we did in the 80s and the 90s when we started wanting to change um, the laws around men who had sex with men. We had to come out in the closet. We had to talk about it. We had to talk about sex work. We had to talk about IV drug intravenous drug use. And we did and we were brave and we have to keep being brave and we have to keep talking about it. Um, so. I've got one minute and I am still optimistic because today, on the day of Support Don't Punish, um, a bill that I did introduce and despite what anyone else has to say, it with, with the support of people like Greg Denham, the support of most people in this room, and I can see some certain people, Cherie, just looking at you right there, um, so the support of wonderful people in, in this room, Stefan, Sam, Tony, Michael, everyone we managed to convince the government that this was the right thing to do. And this is what makes me optimistic, that I today went down and saw the progress of the supervised injecting centre and saw how it was happening and saw that this is the first a very significant move in governments accepting that drug use is not a criminal issue. It is a health issue and that we should be supporting people not punishing people. Of course, with an election coming on, you're not going to hear a lot of that. Um, and I implore you all to be careful with your vote, to be conscientious, to support the candidates and the people. Um, and I mean really support those candidates and people who will keep moving drug policy in the right direction. Canada has just done it in legalising drugs. New Zealand, of course, because they're always better than us, whether it's in rugby or <laughs> marriage equality, they will come down that path. And we are seeing other, other jurisdictions, even Northern Territory, look at the Portuguese model of decriminalising use and possession, and Section 75 must go. But thank you all for having me here today.